On this week's episode, we're joined by Kwame Ose. Kwame grew up in the Rexdale area of Toronto and eventually made his way to the East Coast for university. Not long after graduating with two degrees, Kwame moved to Fort McMurray, where he currently resides. He is now a school teacher, but he also finds time to manage his athletic wear clothing company and coach football, among other things. With a move back to Toronto happening in the near future, it's a very exciting time for Kwame. Listen in as we go through it all. I was the same old me With the same old blues I was the same old me With the same old blues I was the same old me All right, we're back for another episode of Brand New View. Once again, joined by my co-host, Ben. How you doing, Ben? Doing excellent, thank you. How are you, Mark? I'm good, thanks. We are joined all the way from Fort McMurray by Kwame Ose. How you doing, Kwame? I'm good, I'm good. Living on the west side. I like on that. The west side of Canada. Yeah. Um, we're, we're really excited for you to join us this evening. I uh, appreciate you taking the time out of... Uh, you're a very busy schedule. No, it's all good. My pleasure, man. Yeah. So, but you weren't, uh, you're not from Fort McMurray. You were, you're from Toronto, the Rexdale area originally. Yeah, no, unfortunately I'm not from Fort McMurray, which is an amazing city, amazing place that I'm very grateful to have even uh, uh, been blessed with the opportunity to come here. But uh, I'm from, uh, I'm actually originally born in Ghana. Uh, that's in Africa, West oh, Africa. Cool. I came to Canada when I was uh, four years old and resided in, in Rexdale, which is on the west end of Toronto, all of uh, pretty much all my, all my Canadian life until I, I left. Um, uh, growing up, uh, I went to a high school called Father Henry Carr, uh, FHC, really good in basketball and football. And then after that, I went to uh, Montreal, um, lived in Montreal for two years. Uh, Went to a CJEP called Vanier CJEP, uh, where um, a, a lot of transformation started to happen there, let's just say. And then after that, I went to St. Effects, where just topped it off. I, be, I became a new man at St. Effects. So shout out to all my X Men. Yeah, shout out X, shout out East Coast. Yeah, shout out to all my, my school students out there. Yeah, that yeah. Was a blast. So that was one of the uh, best moments, best periods of my life. You know, I, I had six years out there, uh, came out with yeah. two degrees. Um, degree in uh, bachelor education and uh degree in uh human kinetics oh, that's and awesome after that uh, i ended up out here and been here for the last seven years all right very cool so uh as uh, we'll, we'll back up just slightly that was perfect nice little summary of what we're going to get into there um what was it like growing up in toronto uh growing up in toronto um you know uh for me, growing up, um, I grew up in a, in an area where uh, the the expectations of uh, of a young black male were were to uh, be, get involved in gangs and and drugs and and uh, and violence or um, get locked up, out a bunch of friends die, or just end up with a with a low paying job, you mm. know. Uh, those are things that I, I seen growing up, and and growing up, I I, I noticed the guys that had money were or the guys that were into 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 the gangs or selling drugs. You know, they had the jewelry, they had the nice cars. All the girls liked them. You know, so I kind of started to gravitate towards that. You know, like at the end of the day, you are the most a lot of times you're a product of your environment. You know, mm-hmm. if if what I see consistently around me um, uh, seems to be the norm, then I'm gonna think that's what I'm destined to be. So I slowly started to gravitate to, towards that. And um, I'm very fortunate I never got in too deep, um, mainly because of football, because I, I played football um, starting in grade nine. I played football, but I always wanted to play since I was in grade three, but my mom wouldn't let me. Uh, but right. I always had a passion for football. And when I was able to play, uh, I, I, I definitely use more of my extra time towards football than, than other things that my friends were doing. So uh, it kept me distracted, let's just say, from 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 the other things that my, my friends and I would usually do. So um, I'm very for, I'm very fortunate. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of guys I grew up with, man, like half of the guys aren't, aren't even alive or or they're just not doing anything productive. There's a select few. I'd say I, I'd say out of the 
the guys I, I grew up with, maybe uh, out, of, out of our crew, those probably maybe like 15 guys, maybe three, three guys are doing something productive with themselves right now. And six guys are not even alive, you know? Wow. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's the, that's the reality of, of growing up in, in the area like, like Rexdale, like whether it's Rexdale, Scarborough, Jane Finch, there's a bunch of different areas in, in, in Toronto where that, that dynamics are exactly the same. So um, I'm definitely fortunate to be where I am. Um, fortunate to, to be able to look back and, and realize that, man, I was, I was very lucky, you know? So, um, that's pretty much my, my, my life growing up and it, it wasn't all bad, you know, to me, that wasn't bad to me. That was normal. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean but like in I any neighborhood, back, or sorry, you go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, in, in any neighborhood, I can remember growing up in my neighborhood, you look up to the older kids. It doesn't matter what they're doing. You just think mm-hmm. oh, they're, they're cool. Whatever they're doing, I want to do that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, no, I, I, my, 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 uh, my, my young, 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 uh, age at my young age, I had, I had fun, you know, growing up, I had fun, um, but just looking back at it, I realized that the fun I was having sometimes wasn't wasn't legal. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you you found football uh, as a bit of an outlet for you. Yeah, football. Honestly, football was a huge outlet for me. Like I said, I wanted to play when I was in grade three. Uh, I, I had a cousin who um, who was playing football that time. He he was in uh, in high school at that time, and um, I used to go to his house and just literally put on his shoulder pads and helmet and like tell myself I was a football player, but my mom wouldn't let me. So what I would do is that um, because I wasn't allowed to play, I would end up having my own personal practices in my house. You know, oh, yeah. I'll fill up a, a t-shirt with like uh, I'll, I'll fold um, a fold t-shirts and, 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 put it on my shoulders underneath my t-shirt and run around with, with, with a ball, act like I was doing drills and, and, and stuff. But, uh, spin yeah. Move. yeah. So that, that, that was my own thing. I, I, I wasn't able to be on the team, but I was still getting it in. So, You're still getting the reps in. <laughs> exactly. What exactly. position were you? I played receiver. I played receiver. Um, but I played every position truthfully, except for offensive line. Um, since, uh, since I started playing football, Okay. Yeah, I guess when when you're younger, they kind of move you around until they find it. Yeah, they, they move you around, and then I I went through a phase where I was just like short and pudgy. So no, <laughs> playing, like, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, not, not anymore. But uh, I I always had an appetite, let's just say, and I wasn't growing <laughs> vertically. So mm. <laughs> so I got placed on the defensive line when I first started playing defensive line, then linebacker, then then um, DB, then running back and receiver, and yeah. The receiver is always the position I wanted to play from the get-go. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Well, that's good, though. It's good to know, I mean, especially playing as a DB to understand that side of the ball as a receiver. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I've always been told I play receiver like a like a, a, a linebacker. That's what I've been told. So um, that makes sense because I did play defense initially. So oh, yeah, sense. there you go. So um, you mentioned you, you, you went to St. Avex. Did you end up uh, playing a little football there as well? Yes, I, I went to St. Avex in uh, 2006. And um, I, play, I played all my years there. I played five seasons there um, for football. I played a receiver. Um, I was captain for um, three out of those, those five seasons. Um, we had, we had an amazing time, man. I met, but my, my first year, we literally had like one of the best recruiting classes in, in the CIS, um, uh, great team on paper, but on the field, we were just the opposite. Uh, we were, I think we went like one, one and eight or something like that. Mount Allison broke their winless streak against us. Oh no. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, was yeah, Dylan yeah, playing? It was rough. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't think he's on that team. I think he's on the team the next year. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah. Um, well, a buddy of ours was on that team, Jermaine Orham. I'm not sure if you guys know him, but um, yeah, that that my first year was rough. I went into San Effects thinking we were going to be national championship contenders. Uh, we won our first game against Mew, and after that, everything just fell off. You know, and it, it was uh, that that year. Uh, I definitely learned a lot about 
football in general and, and, and being a team in general from that one year. Because like I said, on paper, we were legit. We had a bunch of guys from the NCAA coming over. Uh, our quarterback was like 30 years old. This was oh, before wow. that grandpa rule. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, our kicker was like 34 years old. Uh, and like, but we just had guys from all over North America on that team. Studs, you know, if you look at their their, their track record, like we had studs, and it just seemed like we were going to be the team. And prior to that year, St. Effects had just lost in the in the Lonely Bowl championship to Acadia, I think, or something like that. Mm. So we were thinking we had most of the team coming back, plus we have all these crazy additions. This is going to be legit, you know. And and as a young guy coming in as a rookie, uh, I got start I got to start halfway through the season. Um, which was definitely huge uh, for a first year guy. And uh, I, I realized, you know what? It's not about the individual players. You know, it's about the team. You know, we had a great team on paper, but on the field, we weren't good because we didn't, we didn't, we didn't gel as a team, you know, at, at practice or even outside of, of the other of field, there was the clicks, you know, there was the mm. egos, you know, and, and when there's too many egos, you know what? The, the, the ship is not, it's not going to be able to stay Yes. Be on top of the water. You Not know, gonna so the Eagles will make the ship sink. Exactly. So I, I, I learned a big lesson from that year, and uh, it was a rough year, but it was, it was probably um, the, 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 the year that definitely changed my mindset with regards to team building um, out of all my years playing. That's that's amazing. I mean, take us through some of your education, like whether it was one to twelve, or, and then. A little bit of university as well. What were you interested in? Um, like when I was younger, or like yeah, like university? take us through, like a little bit of the journey. Well, uh, Ben I was just wondering. I mean, uh, coming to high school, I guess when when you uh, had decided to go to X, was it just uh, a, a strictly a football decision because of the? Oh, okay. Or yeah, was, was there sure. a particular educational oh, side to yeah. it that you were interested in as well? Because you didn't mention, I mean, you got the two degrees, so, I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay, so, um, I was, man, when I, as, as a youth, as, as, a, as, a, as a youth, I was definitely the least, least, least uh, scholaristic out of uh, everybody I knew, you know. Uh, I, I wasn't really into school. Um, in grade nine, I, I failed every class, <laughs> every class except for phys ed and drama. Like literally, oh, I barely went go. to school. Um, and in my grade ten year uh, in Ontario, they have um, general, basic, and advanced. I'm not sure what they have in Nova Scotia, but in in Alberta, they have dash one, dash two, dash three, which is the same thing, right? right? Yeah. And where dash dash three is basic and dash one is advanced. And I was put in all basic classes, meaning my math class i'm learning simple multiplications my english class i'm learning words like cat and dog right this is in grade 10 and this that that class is there's a certain group where, of people that that class is perfect for anybody that's new to the country 100 mm-hmm. percent. but for somebody like me i didn't need to be in that class but i was in that class because i wasn't trying in school and therefore everybody just thought i didn't have the ability to be in the other classes i think that happens and, so um, often where people I mean, I, I was in the same boat where it was an effort thing and people mm-hmm. think it's an ability thing. And and if you put, if you're basing it on ability and like you say, putting in a class where learning like cat and dog, it's like, well, this is only going to make things worse. How am I going to be any more motivated to learn stuff that is... Yeah, you're going to be turned off, right? right? You're going to be like, why am I here? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, I, and I remember I remember being in those classes and, and some of my friends would walk by and 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 uh, poke their head in the door and laugh at me, you know, like I was embarrassed, bro. Yeah. And um, it took a, there was a teacher, Miss Govea. Um, she was my math teacher, and I was with her in that basic class. And she realized early, she's like, "You're not you're like you don't belong in this level." She's like, "You're capable of doing um, the general work," and she's like, "You know what?" I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to stay in this class, but I'm going to mark you. I'm going to give you a general credit, right? Mm-hmm. You can stay in this class. I'm going to give you one-on-one time. I'm going to give you a general credit. From that day on that, that, that year I got my, I got my general credit. I don't remember what I got, but I, I specifically remember the next year I was able to move up to the advanced class. Wow. And 
she oh, would tough. also still help me one on one. She she tutored me, and I remember I like I, I this is a feeling I would never forget, you know, because I would always look up to the bad kids like, oh, they're so smart. I can never be like them, you know. I like I, I'm dumb, you know. Like how do how are these people so smart? Like how do they think of these equations? Like I just thought these people were like superhuman. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, I remember like specifically studying with her, and then one day. Um, uh, there was a test we had for our class, uh, and she was in my teacher. She was in, she was in my teacher at that time. She was just tutoring me, you know, just because she saw potential in me, I think. And I ended up getting higher than a bunch of the smart guys that were in that class. And and, and I was, I think, I think I was like one of the top three in that class. And it was just a simple thing of, of me, of, of her understanding the way I learned. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm. And that mm. feeling of just. Just feeling like you're feeling like you're worth it, you know. Feeling like you matter. Feeling like like uh, someone like, believes like you in you in that class, exactly. And I, I would never forget that. So, anyways, what was her name? Let's give her a shout out. Miss Covea. Shout out, Miss Covea. Shout out to Miss Covea. For sure. Um, so, after high school, um, I had decent marks, right? But I kind of didn't want to go to university right away. I wasn't ready to go to university right away. And I mm-hmm. also needed to upgrade a few marks also. Mm-hmm. Um, like math, I was good. But as other classes, like, I wasn't so good. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't totally good in terms of behavior and, and academics. Um, just because I, I, I still had a, a few bad tendencies. So I ended up going to Vanny College to upgrade my marks. Right. And at Vanny is where I actually started to actually try, maybe because I, was, I had to pay for, for school. So I was like, oh, shoot. We're on the pay line for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I might as well try, you know, get, get something out of it. Right. And also because I knew that uh, it could provide opportunity for me to get a scholarship to the state. So more on the line. Um, and at Vanny, I started I start trying. I read my first book at, at Vanny. And all, all through high school, I've never read a book. Never read a book, like no novels, nothing. In, in, in English, English class, I was just fine. You know the Cole's notes and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. as long as as long as I knew the plot to a story, I was good because yeah. I know how I know how to just 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 uh, you know go off of that and, and even BS some stuff. Right. You know? So, um, in at Vanny College is when I first started to really really um, uh, keep myself accountable and 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 put in some effort and. And I ended up having like an 80 average at Vanier. And from there, um, I had opportunity to go play down south in, in the States. A few few uh, Division two schools were after me and a few uh, D1 schools were also interested in me. And unfortunately, I tore my meniscus in that off season during the recruiting mm. season. So um, it, it really, yeah, that was, it was a rough time for me. Um, uh, I have... I've, I, I pretty much just told myself, you know what, I'll just stay in Canada. And a friend of mine convinced me to go to St. Effects, uh, which I wasn't even, even going to go to because I went to an on recruitment trip. And mm-hmm. I told myself, no, I'm not going to this place because uh, I'm a guy that's used to the big city. You know, yeah, X is Toronto, below you. Montreal. Yeah, X is like, you know, <laughs> it was a little bit of a culture shock. Small town. Went on a recruitment For trip, sure. a culture shock. And again, nowhere. Auntie, nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Adi Ganesh, shout out Adi Ganesh. Yeah, Adi Ganesh. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, my, my buddy, Akeem Foster, I remember us being at the airport on the way back from uh, from X, and he, he was, she was trying to convince me to stay and to come with him to X. Uh, we'll co- come there together, you know, we'll, we'll do big things. And I looked at this guy in his eye, and I'm like, bro, I'm not coming to this place. <laughs> and it took, <laughs> literally, I told him, he'll tell you guys. And uh, a couple of weeks later, a buddy of mine from... Uh, Toronto, a guy who I really looked up to, went to the same high school named Travis Noel. Uh, he uh, he was transferring from Marshall University in uh, in the states in Virginia, and he was transferring to come up, come to a school in Canada because uh, he knew he was going to get drafted in the CFL the following year, and he wanted to kind of get you know um, comfortable with the Canadian game again in right. the field. So Makes he sense. decided to go to Saint FX. And he convinced me to come to St. Effects. So I ended up going to St. Effects. My mentality was, um, I'm here for football. I'm going to CFL, and that's it. You know, I, I'm going to take a uh, Bachelor of Arts. You know, I'm just going to get by, whether it's 60, 65, I'm just going to get by, and that's it. Uh, and that was my game plan. 
That was my game plan. And the crazy thing is that although that that was my game plan, I never in my mind actually believed that mm. I would mm. go to the CFL. I was just saying that, you know. And in my second year, I started realizing that I need to have a backup plan in case that doesn't happen, you know. In my second year, I realized that I'm in this degree, uh, sociology degree just because it's, it's the easiest thing to take mm. and the least requirements. And then I asked myself, what am I going to do with this degree? I, I I never even thought about being a social worker. I wasn't sure what else I was going to get into. And then I also thought about there's a lot of people in this program. So think about all the people who are going to be graduating from this CROW program across Canada that are going to be going for social work, social worker um, jobs, or I don't know. There's a, it, it, there's a lot of people in that program. So I, I just yeah. told myself, you know what, I need, I need to get into something that's one more for me and, and, and two can let, get me a job a little bit faster mm. after university. And I did my research and, um, and a few other people told me, Kwame, you need to be a teacher. Kwame, mm. like you, you, you could be a great phys ed teacher. Kwame, you know, you're really good with kids. You know, you should think about coaching that those words kept coming coming around from various people. And I wasn't even a vocal person at that time. But for some reason, um, people people listened to me. People um, kind of gravitated to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just my energy. I don't know. But that would always happen. Like, I, I'd barely talk. If you could ask anybody at, at X, I was very quiet. Mm-hmm. And uh, eventually, I started becoming a leader. And I, I transferred into kinesiology. Uh, which was an easy, easy transfer for me because I already had done my electives because of my sociology um, degree I was working on. And from there, my marks went up. Uh, I think my first my first year in sociology, my marks were like, I think I had a 60 average. Um, by my third year, I was averaging uh, like 75 and up. My last year, I was an academic all Canadian. Hey, congratulations. There you That's go. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. So I'm wondering. Yeah, so yeah, that, oh, that's the academic story. Right. Um, oh no! Wait, uh, I want to figure yeah, out. Go for it. What was your first book? Oh, great question. The first book I read. Yeah, Life of Pi. Hey, of there Pi. you go. <laughs> Life of Pi. I'll I saw the movie. <laughs> Did you <laughs> say you have to give that book back, bro? Yeah. <laughs> you still have that like, on loan? I was, I, was surpri- I was surprised I even read it, man. Like I, I remember getting it for um my English class at Vanny and looking at the book like, oh my God, how am I supposed to read this? Then I, I, I was going to do the whole Coles, note, Coles Notes thing. So I was like, okay, let me just try it. Let me just try to read a couple of pages. And as I read, like I just got sucked into the book, you know, like, you know what people say? Yeah. Just, like you could just lay down and read a book all day. I got it. I never understood it before. I was just like, well, bro, that's boring. Like, who's reading, what are you doing just reading the book? But um, I got engulfed in the book and uh, never put it down. How do you feel? Oh, it was great, man. Like, I, I, I was proud of myself. I was honestly proud of myself. It was a first for me, you know, and uh, and I enjoyed it. And ever since then, you know, I've read so many books. Like, I can't even count how many books I've read since then. That's all. I haven't read a book in a while. So it's bad. I got to get back <laughs> into that. Yeah. Get, get into the audiobooks. I do the audiobooks, too. Oh, so yeah. I'm walking my yeah. dogs. My dog is just listening to my audiobook. That's a great idea. No, listen to podcasts. Screw audiobooks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Got you. Uh, I'm wondering you said after the first year uh, expectations really weren't really met with the team uh, the, the obviously a lot of superstars coming from all over the place and not being able to become mm-hmm. not being able to mesh and and work together with a common goal I mean you see that with a lot of sports teams I think of soccer mm-hmm. I think of Real Madrid um, and you mentioned that you you were able to change some things or change uh, your perception at the end of that year uh, going mm-hmm. forward in terms of building in team building and leadership. And I'm wondering what, what those were the steps you took. Um, honestly, one it's um, like our, our coach, what I noticed about, about X is that I noticed that our, our coach kind of like favored um, our coach at that time kind of favored like the superstars, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. superstars were somebody to him and everybody else was kind of like nobody. And I, and I realized that because, um, I remember my first two, the first two weeks at X for me, like I was kind of like a nobody, I was injured. Right. So I, I, I wasn't really on the field. Right. Um, and I never really got much attention. So I was kind of hanging around with the guys that weren't playing much, you know, the, the scout team. 
I was mm-hmm. around those guys, and I, I noticed what the team is like from their perspective. So um, I feel like the biggest thing for a coach to do is, is to make sure he treats each in the, each individual on his team the same way. Every individual on a team needs to feel valued. If people feel valued, they put in more effort. If people feel like the coach, the coach has your back, that the coach cares about them more than a the player, then they'll they'll bend over backwards for for them. They'll go to war for them, right? Absolutely. And our team didn't have didn't have didn't have that type of mentality. So, um, I'm by our third year. I remember we had we had Gary Waterman by our third year, and I loved him. He's still there. He's still there. The guys loved him. Everybody loves one. He's a players coach. Players right? coach, yeah. And and, and it, was, it was it was it was it was a fun 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 year. It was a fun year. We had fun. So um, that's one thing I, I I took away from that year. Oftentimes, why or not, that's exactly why they call it players coach, right? I mean, they're exactly. always appeasing exactly. to the players. Awesome. So much more fun. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing you always see. Uh, at the end of the year, every team in the finals is a team that will, like you said, run through a brick wall for their management. While having staff. fun. While having fun. Right? They're all top mm-hmm. to bottom. They're all on the same page. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Love That's it. Full proof. So what, uh, did you guys have a bit of success in your uh, next few years? Yeah. Um, <laughs> After my first year, which I said we went uh, one and whatever, uh, then uh, my second, third, and fourth year years, we um, played in, played in the AUS championship for uh-huh. three straight years. Unfortunately, <laughs> oh no! Well, did you pull Jim Kelly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. Pulled. Oh no! The first year, first year we lost by one point, I believe. Oh, like, like the the first year that we made the championship. So I think I remember that. Year, I don't like where this season, is going. My third season, I think we lost by two points, mm. and my and then the fourth year we lost by four points, I believe. Um, oh, that's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Man. Sorry to bring that up. <laughs> I try, I try, I try to block that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Reliving some you know, <laughs> demons here. We're there with you. But but you know what? Those years were fun, man, and we were a true team. That's okay. Uh, if you look back on on our, at our roster, man, we had so many guys go to CFL from from those teams. We had we always had talent, um, and it was it was great to represent um, Saint FX and Andy Ganesh. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so another thing you mentioned was uh, coming into X. It was just football, like you know, you're in sociology and whatever. You get your sixties or seventies, but then you ended up with two degrees. So what kind of uh, flipped that switch for you? <laughs> I don't know. Somehow, miraculously, I ended up with two degrees. In my head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I never planned on getting up, but they they showed up. Um, honestly, uh, like I said, my third my third year, um, I realized that I needed to have a backup plan. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I I also realized how hard it w- it was to also get to the CFL. So I saw a lot of guys get drafted or get picked up as free agents and not stick, mm-hmm. and then. They they weren't really doing much with 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 with, with themselves, you know. Even though they yeah. had a degree, they, like there wasn't much they were doing because no, but, the degree yeah. didn't, you know. No backup plan. Any jobs? And you're exactly. one bad injury away. Right, hundred percent, hundred percent, right. And um, yeah, I honestly, I just started thinking. I was just forward thinking. That was just it. I was thinking about the future. I was thinking long term. Mm. Uh, I remember one of my buddies, he got mad at me because I, I transferred out of sociology and went to human kinetics. He's like, yo, we're supposed to be doing this together. Like, <laughs> 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 I got to think about the future, man. You know? so, uh, that's funny. Uh, I, it, it started awesome. to click. You know? I just started seeing things from a different perspective. Although like, I still love football and I'm still chasing um, the league, but I... I know football. Football is even if I make the league, football is going to only last like some guys only last like two, three years. You're lucky. You're, you're lucky if you last three years. Let's just say in mm-hmm. league, you know, uh, no, no, it's it's a young man's game. It's always changing, and it's not for certain. So um, I I told myself uh, I need to put myself in a position to be successful for, successful for life. That was pretty much it. There you go. So uh, after you um, got your two degrees, after you finished up. What uh, what came next for you? Uh, so um, after my first degree, I went back to school for education. Right. So I graduated in my fourth year. 
uh, for um, human kinetics, and then I went back for my education, which is a two de- two two year degree, my bachelor of education. Mm-hmm. And um, after my first year, my bachelor of education degree, I actually got picked up by the Toronto Argonauts uh, to, to play in the CFL. I got picked up as a free agent, and um, there you go, right? And yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I actually I got got a shot. I, I remember, I still remember the first day of training camp, just holding the Argonaut helmet, and just staring at it. Man. Like, <laughs> you know, I was just staring at it because I'm a kid that grew up in Toronto. You yeah, know? I've watched so many Argo games on Big TV and in person, and I, I was it was just like like just like a wow moment. Like I'm on this team, you know. So uh, it, it was a great experience, honestly. Uh, one of the, one of the best experiences of my life. You know, just being able to uh, play on that field, um, even sign autographs for kids after the game. You know, like it just—it's it, when, when you feel you made it. It was that 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 I made it moment. You know, so that was a great experience. But unfortunately, I got released after uh, training camp, uh, mainly just because they just didn't have space for space for me. Um, they, kept, they they kept all the returning uh, Canadians, so essentially, there just wasn't space for me. So after that, I went back to school, finished my. Uh, education degree um then got that second degree and then ended up uh in nova scotia i mean sorry in um uh alberta in alberta okay yeah and did you you did you get that teaching degree because of everyone saying you'd be such a great teacher such a great coach yeah honest yeah essentially my, my coach donnie d uh at, at uh st fx was always on me about getting into education shout out donnie d it. shout out to donnie d and um yeah i never understood why he would say that because i was i guess i've always been a leader by example you know and then toward towards my later years at, at x i became like the emotional leader you know um but i guess he, he just saw some some type of quality in me that i didn't even see you know and and it, it's just weird because uh, other people would also say say things a, a guy named marvin mccudi i'm not sure if you guys know him but uh he was like a legendary running back at st fx before my time okay and uh he was kind of like our mentor type thing to myself and, and my and my friends um we all lived in the same house together and 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 just so you know i gotta, I gotta put this one out there in my in my uh household at st fx so the guys that i live with those um five six of us yeah, there were six guys in that house, and all six of us made it to the CFL at one point or another. Whoa, that's and a that, talented that household. Was simply, that was just simply because we, we we pushed each other, we sharpened each other, we pushed each other, we trained together. Yeah, like we 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 all had the same mindset, and and I'm a firm believer of of um, just being in the right environment. You know, the right environment will will uh, will will um, ignite ignite the flame Absolutely. the right environment yeah. will, will, will cause will, will cause change and growth for the better of, of you so um shout out to all, all my boys they know who, who they are um and that, that was just a great a great experience great experience for me but like back to marvin mccudi i remember uh when he was leaving us he sent each of us um he sent an email to the whole group and he was kind of just telling us uh, well wishes you know for next year and great attributes about each and every one of us. And he goes to me, he's like, um, all my friends call me slick. So he's like, slick, honestly, like I'm a firm believer, like some, some leaders are born, some leaders are made. He's like, you, you, you are a born leader and you don't realize this, but like all the guys listen to you, they gravitate to you. The things you do that they want to do too. Like people, people just trust you. You have a way of connecting with people. Mm-hmm. And at that time I was just like, uh, okay, okay. Well, I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I get it. You're being sentimental, or whatever. I never thought anything <laughs> of it, but then you start hearing the same things over and over, similar things, and then you start realizing, man, like you you have some you have some type of gift, some type of you know, like uh, this is this is part of who you are. It's part of your D, your DNA, and, and if you don't do anything with it, then you're just wasting it. Right, you might as well so, utilize it. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much how I got into coaching and teaching and all that stuff. All right, and what uh, what initially brought you out to Alberta? Uh, Alberta. Oof. So in my second year at St. Um we part of a requirement for the course of um, of the Bachelor of Education is that you have to attend a a job fair that's in Halifax, actually. At um, was it was it Mount Royal? Is it is Mount Royal in um, Halifax? Mount St. Vincent. 
Is it Mount St. Vincent? Yeah. I think Mount Royal yes. is in Ontario. Yeah, that's, a, that's in Alberta. Alberta. That's in Alberta. Alberta, Alberta, Alberta yeah. Right. yeah, Mount St. Vincent. So there's a co- that college there, they have um, a um, job fair where all like the school boards across Canada pretty much go to. And um, people get interviews and all that stuff. And I went into it with a mindset that I'm just doing this because this is a requirement for my, for my um, course. And you know what? I might as well just get interview experience, right? Yeah. So I went there, you know, walked around, checked, checked some boards out and uh, came across the Fort Murray Catholic School Board um, station and uh, had a great chat with the superintendent, George McGuigan, there. And uh, he gave me an interview and it was it was great. You know, I, I, I must have did something that, that, that sparked some interest because the next day, actually that same day, he called me and he offered me a job. And at that time, I told him, um, I told him I was uh, still focusing on football, right? And he's like, you know what, Kwame? Like, uh, yeah, you could still go after football. How about this? Um, let's 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 let's, um, let's sign you up, and if football pans out for you, then we'll make it void. I'm like, yeah, perfect, perfect. That's awesome. Uh, that summer, unfortunately, I had, I had a few um, workouts with some teams lined up, and as 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 crazy as it is, I end up having uh, injuries around that same time of those workouts, those two workouts. I, I, I pulled my hamstring twice during that summer at crucial times. And after that, I called George. I said, you know what, I'll come to Fort Marie for a year, and I've been there for s- seven years. And ever since. <laughs> yeah. 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 What was it like uh, when you first touched down? You know what? Santa Fe's prepared me for anything, man. Like any <laughs> prepared me for anything. I think I, I, I think I could go. I can go anywhere and survive. Like, like any is not that bad, but like in the summer, there's like no, nobody there, right? And like you, you're 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 isolated. Like what you guys said, any good go nowhere. You're you're really isolated. And what makes that city and that school so great is that so many students from all across Canada or even the world come there together, and it's kind of like your own little community. You know, that's what made it made that makes that 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 school so, so vibrant and so good. And um, essentially what I'm saying is, like, I could last in a small town because of my experience there. Had I gone from Montreal or from Toronto to uh, Fort Murray, I probably would never last a year. Yeah, never, because I didn't I didn't have a university to be in, you know. Um, but, um, you know, Fort Murray is good. Fort Murray is good. Is good. Uh, it was it, it prior to me, myself even coming out here. People were telling me I shouldn't come out here. You know, I had a bunch of coaches telling me that um, coaches and people I looked up to were telling me that it's a redneck town. You know, it's depressing. It's all about the oil fields and uh, people are negative there. You're not gonna like it. I had a pastor even tell me not not to come out here. But um, you know, I'm a I, I, I'm a firm believer that that everywhere you look and everywhere you go, there's good and bad. You know, it's about what you associate yourself with, you know, and uh, I don't associate myself with negative people. So I'm negative people. So I, I knew I'd be good. And um, coming out here, it, it was it was probably one of the best decisions of my life. To tell you the truth, I grew a lot as a as an individual and uh, I helped I helped um, help change the dynamic of uh, dynamics of Fort Murray and especially youth sports, you know, um, Myself and a few friends of mine have made football like one of the main sports in this town ever since we've been here. Um, we've had numerous kids go to uh, post-secondary uh, institutions for football. Um, we have we have a bunch of kids in the states at prep schools and at, at NCAA schools playing football that are from Fort McMurray. And prior to prior to us coming here. I think there was only one kid that made it out from Fort Murray to play football, and that was Leroy Fontaine, who played at St. Mary's. Wow. So it's, you significantly increased those numbers. Yeah. Yeah. No, when we look back at it, man, like, we, we, we've, done, we've done a lot of good things here, and, I, and I, I'm fortunate to have been part of it. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I guess we can say now, uh, Kwame knows one of our former guests, Dylan, Mm-hmm. Relatively well, they. Uh, <laughs> that's my dude. That's my dude. <laughs> that's the other guy in the story. Yeah, they're business partners with uh, Northern Elite Football. Or- yeah, so Northern Elite Football. Um, so I have a company called Triumph Elite. Um, it's a clothing company. Uh, we make athletic clothes and uh, and apparel. 
Yeah. And we also do like boot camps. And at that time, we were doing training, like uh, personal training and stuff. And uh, Dylan approached me about, well, we, okay, let me remember the story good. Okay. At that time, I was supposed to help the, uh, the University of Alberta put on a football camp in Fort Murray. And um, something happened where uh, they just ended up uh, like pulling out of it. Right, yeah, and you guys were happened. like, dude, anyways. And I had, all, yeah. I, I, had, I had everything ready, you know, so I was kind of like, kind of told Dylan about it. He's like, yo, let's, why don't we just put our own, put on our own camp? I was like, really? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, fine, cool. We'll do it through Triathlete, right? And uh, we decided to kind of, do it to try and delete. Then we're like, okay, maybe we shouldn't call it try and delete. Let, let's uh, let's keep try and delete separate. And we decided to, to, to make a nonprofit called Northern Elite, was, which was at that time an extension of try and delete. With, but now they're not. They have nothing to do with each other. But I'm still part of both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and then we did, had our first camp um, five years ago. It was a huge success, a huge smash. Um, if you look back, if we look back on the kids that we've had. Over, over the years at our camps, uh, we, we we've been successful, man. Um, kids, kids had like not only skill wise, but just in terms of um, mentality and uh, and the mentorship we we we've, we've helped uh, give these these kids. Uh, we we've been successful because the thing that makes our makes made our, our camps uh, different is that in every camp we had like a mental health moment or like a mentorship moment where we're educating these kids, you know, just about mental health, uh, just about talking about their problems, you know, especially the year that we had the fire. And that was a, that was a huge year for us. You know, people were going through a lot of mental problems, a lot of mental health issues. And we, we let them know that, you know, it's, it, it, it's okay to talk about this. You know, you're not alone. Everybody's going through a hard time, you know, and then we always bring in guys uh, in the CFL or, or NFL that who we feel, um, have a similar mindset as, as us, you know, guys that we felt were positive and could, could help uh, enlighten the kids and help teach them not only skills on the field, but off the field. Mm-hmm. And um, Would you say it, it's about we, 50-50, we, teaching, you know, football skills and life skills? Yeah, 100%, 100%. You know, and fo- and football football skills, uh, fo- like Very sports in general, I believe mm-hmm. exactly. Sports in general, like I- I'll be biased and say football, but I- I'll keep it real. Sports in general, right, uh, s- transfers to real life. You know, the skill you look learn in sports, like responsibility. You know, teamwork. You know, uh, holding yourself accountable, uh, prioritizing your time, all that stuff tr- transfers to real life. You know, so any parents out there, I, I strongly urge urge you to get your kids in, in some type of sport. There's a lot out there. there there's, yeah. like, you know, hundreds of sports. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so there's one for everyone. For Especially sure. in this era where, you know, there's so many video games and stuff, man. You got to do something, you know. Mm. Don't, 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 don't let your kids sit, sit in front of a TV and just waste brain cells and, you know, just be inactive. You know, get, get them active. You know, human beings are meant to move. We're meant to move. We're not meant to sit down and watch TV and play and, and just move our, our thumbs. Exactly. You know? so there's nothing wrong with video games, but, you know, like everything in moderation. Right. Big time. Oh, yeah. And you know, I play FIFA and, and Madden from time to time. But I saw someone wrote a quote like if we weren't meant to move, then our feet would be stumps tr- like a tree stump. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Not legs. No question. And I, think I like that one. We talked about uh, I was on like a, a retreat a week and a half ago and in, in, on Picto Island, actually just past Anakinish or no, just before. Right. Yeah. I should know my own province. And uh, we we're just talking about like unplugging and, and, and unwinding and just getting mm-hmm. away from all the electronics that we constantly are around and not even realize how addicted we are to them. Like before I remember growing up, it was punishment to stay inside. That meant you were grounded. <laughs> it's now true. it's the opposite. <laughs> now it's, yeah. Right. <laughs> You're grounded. Get out of the house. <laughs> It's weird. That's hilarious. Yeah, no, it's true, man. Hey, I, I had, I had that, 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 I say, that moment where I, I realized that I was, uh, I just realized the effects of, of technology in my life. You know, anybody who knows me knows like I'm always on my phone. Like, I've, I've been like that for the last, I don't even know how many years. But um, ever since the major race, I've, I've decided to, you know, limit my time on the phone. I've decided like if, if I'm ever talking to somebody, 
I, I purposely put away my phone. Yeah. You know, because um, I, I, I just, I, I notice an attachment to my phone. Sometimes I'll look at my phone for no reason, you know, just to see if there was a message back in the days. And, and uh, 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 during the race, so we weren't allowed to have our, our phones with us during the race, during, during the amazing race. So um, it was about, a, I don't remember, I think it was like about eight weeks or so that we didn't have our phones. And I specifically remember getting off a plane um, I think it was when we were in PEI. No, it was in PEI. Shout out PEI. <laughs> Bench Shout from PEI. <laughs> um, great place too, by the way. Right? People were so nice there. <laughs> so like, nice. East Coast are just so nice in general, man. That's so much fun. Like, I remember yeah. going, yeah. When, when I first went to Anaganish, bro, I was, wa- I was walking on... Um, I was walking on, on the sidewalk, and it kind of, I guess it kind of looked like I was going to cross over, and the cars just stopped. I looked around, I'm like, what? <laughs> this yeah, is what that's not normal? normal? Like, literally, everybody just stopped. <laughs> I'm like, what? You walk, and then you're walking on the street, people are smiling at you, saying hi. What? Oh, yeah. Where I grew up, if you smile, hey, you, you, you get ready for get get ready get ready for an issue. Nobody <laughs> wants you looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto, Toronto is the screw face capital of the world. So what are you looking me, at? It was just so weird, but it was good, man, because it brought out a different side of me. To tell you the truth. Mm. Yeah, it's small. But, um, it's nice over here. It's like what's that? Sorry. Yeah. So we got. I'll get off the plane. I can't remember exactly where we were, and I just saw. It everybody on the plane so i'm standing up in the aisle everybody on the plane except for the amazing race people on their phones the moment the plane landed everybody phones out heads down just staring at the phone and it was so eerie like it was just like robotic like what you know so i saw that from a different perspective once again and i was like oh shoot this is i'm one of those guys really that's me that's how the whole world is you know so i kind of told myself you know i'm gonna try to like just limit my 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 phone use i'm I'm trying i'm trying i'm not perfect but i'm I'm trying to limit it but the biggest thing is that whenever i'm talking to somebody or if i'm in a meeting i put my phone down from now on before i would never do that you could ask dylan that's one of his pet peeves yeah he hates it when i do that (laughs) (laughs) i'm I'm the same and i'm trying to to not do that because yeah it's just it sucks. It's like if you're gonna go, if you're gonna have a conversation with someone on your phone, go hang out with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just it's disrespectful. Like at that time, I didn't view it as this disrespectful. I thought I'm just multitasking. Like I'm listening. Don't worry, I'm listening. But you know, it, it, it's disrespectful. So I try my best to do that. No, I turned the alerts off on on all the my social medias. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. Me too. I try and go only airplane mode after. Only, only, only my text. Only my text is on. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, that seems to be like I'm. I'm the big one. Uh, I mean, I didn't use it that often, but as soon as I turn the alerts off for Snapchat, like I, I forget about it for days, yeah. sometimes weeks. Yeah, yeah, same. And it's good. It's good. You can't live your life like just worrying about what messages you're getting, right? No, exactly. Just... That's why the podcast is so nice. We we get to put our phones away for an hour and a half and and not think about it. <laughs> Just have a nice chat. Home break, eh? yeah, just to have a nice <laughs> conversation for exactly. sure. Oh, have you yeah, watched? Talk, do you watch? Talk like the good old days, right? It's so nice. It's like going to a co- cottage, but in short form. <laughs> no signal. <laughs> so, um, what's going on present day for you? Present day, um, oof, what's, what is going on? Um, well. Dang, what is going on right now? You know, right, oh, I'm getting right now. I'm getting ready for. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm getting ready for um, U16. Um, I coach. I coach for Alberta uh, provincial team. So um, we have a huge uh, uh, cup or or uh, what we have a huge tournament we're going to in uh, in July called the Western Canada Cup, and uh, we're going to try to make go for the three peat we've been uh back-to-back champions the last two years and uh now right now my focus is getting that third championship and then uh also next year um i'm actually gonna be living in ontario next year um oh big move I'm yeah Fort Murray. yeah yeah big move man but um i'm gonna, I'm gonna go back for a year i um, just kind of want to be closer to family yeah you know and uh, just try to try to do i, I just want 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 it want a change for the year you know just be close to family and and uh, and do do something different for the switch year. Switch it up for a bit, yeah. Yeah. And will you still run, or is Dylan going to take over Northern Elite 
and, or, and oh, no, 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 yeah, not in the least, though. I'm still, still part of that. You'll still be part know? of it. You're we'll, just... we'll, yeah, yeah. We we have our camps, uh, like two camps a year. I'll definitely be a part of it. I'll fly okay. back for that. that, that okay, that's that's cool. not going to change. That's good. And so you're, you, you're, uh, you're a teacher still? Yes, I'm so, a teacher right so now. So where, um, where are you going to be teaching? Do you have a spot lined up for, uh, for Toronto? Right now, I'm, prob- I'm probably going to do some substitute teaching um mm-hmm. and and also uh, help coach uh, a few teams a few friend of my a few friends of mine have, have already contacted me to help coach their teams and uh, and i'm going to focus on my um triumph elite business and my speaking speaking business i guess yeah oh yes You're, you got some uh mentor speaking going on yeah i do a lot of motivational speak uh speaking to like uh the youth teens, you know, just just talking about my life and just uh, t- talking about perspective, right? Because uh, pers- perspective is everything in life. So yeah. I, I use a lot of metaphors and life stories just to bring bring home the message of of uh, of unleashing your potential and having the right perspective on, of on life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, it's it's good to get at the at kids young and and uh, send them on the right path. We certainly exactly. agree with that here. Yeah, hundred percent. And and the reason why I do it is because you know what? When I was younger, I didn't have anybody come to speak to me about life or come to motivate me about things I'm I'm, I'm able to do um, at the, at a young age. And if and if if I did have somebody, it wasn't somebody I could relate to. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Now, that's the biggest thing. You know, if you can't relate to the message, if you can't relate to a person, you're not going to listen to relatability. So that's huge. usually how it is. So, um, I, I know I'm definitely relatable to a lot of people who um, I interact with, whether it's uh, through sports or or just through being a minority. You know, um, or or just through being going through adversity. You know, like there's different things that I relate to people through, and um, and uh, I'm definitely uh, definitely want to want to advocate for them and, and help inspire them. So where in Ontario will you be living? I'll be I'll be in Toronto. Nice one, right in the uh, downtown sector. I've got I've got a lot of family actually in in Toronto, so I may yeah or yeah, pass me across. Yeah, we're like we're right now Toronto. Toronto is hot right now with uh, the Jurassic Park. Toronto Raptors. Raptors. Oh yes, go man. We the north. Oh man, I, I, I just really hope we win tomorrow. Oh man, I'm, I'm praying we win tomorrow, bro. We I need, know. We need, it, we need it tomorrow. Well, by the I time this episode, game seven. what's I, I know game seven. game seven is just going to be too nerve wracking for me. My heart can't handle yeah. that. But I mean, by the time this episode bro. comes out, the the we'll know. We'll be either we'll be champions we'll or we'll be oh. we'll be losers. Hey, oh man! All right, man. Hey, I'm praying we won. Are you gonna are you gonna make a call this, predictions? Yeah. Nah, nah, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to test I'm, it. I'm, I'm like, hey, Dylan. Dylan will tell you. I'm I'm like one of those like, I'm kind of superstitious. I say I'm not superstitious, but I am. So I, I don't get into predicting stuff. But I need we need the Raptors to win, bro. We need we it. need them to win. Yeah. We need it. We we need this right now. Right, we need this just for for Canada, for Toronto, for the future kids that are, the kids that are watching watching the sport for the for the country coming together as one. Like, right, we it's need this. So cool to it's see huge. every walk of life heading down to Jurassic Park across yeah, Canada. Even even if you don't even if you don't like basketball, like you're right? you're a part of this. You know, this is like the whole country coming together as one. Like, it's it's, it's so beautiful, cool. man. Um, well, before we get out of here, uh, any, any big stuff coming up in the future? I know you mentioned the the camps coming up, but any big uh, business plans besides the move or do you've got uh, like a five-year plan or anything like that? Um, well, I'm hoping to finally publish my second book, either hopefully by the end of the year. What? Hold it. Yeah, second book. You can't just graze over the first one. Oh, the first one uh, is called <laughs> "If Not Me, Then Who?" The Tale of the Little Eagle. It's uh, it's a children's book. Um, oh, cool! Uh, aimed, aimed at uh, at preteen kids. You know, I just find like, uh, in order to impact kids, you got to hit them before they get to high school, where you know the peer pressure and all that stuff stuff um, happens. You know, so I want to just want to just build a foundation. You know, a foundation of uh, just understanding who they are and and beliefs, belief in them in themselves, so that nobody can steer them away from from what they want you know so um it's a, it's just a book about uh pretty much my life 
but using animal imagery, um, just talking about being in the right environment and understanding that you're you're able to soar like an eagle, you know. Um, and uh, I, I I think I published that book in 2014, I believe. And yeah, I have now. I have another book. It's done. It's been done for like a year. It's just I'm just dealing with the illustrations right now, and I'm hoping to finally get it done sometime this year. Fingers crossed. Awesome. That sounds amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. You're doing everything. Second book, bro. I, we got one life to live, man. We gotta let all our gifts out. You're right. Well, I'll tell you. Shame for me to die with my gifts. I'll I'll give you a good quote here. It's a Confucius quote. A man has two lives. The second begins when he realizes he only has one. Woo! Right? Woo! That's deep. There we go. Wow. Yeah. Knocks you off your feet. And that's so true. Right? It's so true. Wow. I love that. I've never heard that before. Yeah, I heard it the other day for the first time, too. And I was like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm writing Same. it down. Shivers. I'm post that. That's a good one. Take it. It's not mine. I love that. Confucius. Confucius. That. Badass so, guy, apparently. A, a, a man has. Uh, two lives to live. A man has uh, two lives to live. The second begins when he realizes he only has one. I'm posting that. No, yeah. it's so true. It is so true. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Of course, yeah. So, speaking of uh, posting it, where can people find you? Hey, hit me up on IG. I am Kwame Ose. That is, I am Kwame Ose. I also have Twitter, but I'm bad at Twitter. Man. Same. Are you good? Are you guys good at Twitter? Terrible no, at it. Terrible. <laughs> I just like, cross post man. from Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing. That's, that's exactly what I do. Whatever I post on Instagram, I post on Twitter. But right. Twitter, I don't, I don't get. I don't, I don't get that much love on Twitter. But uh, my Twitter is for Kwame Ose. That's the number four Kwame Ose, and. Um, I also have uh, Facebook. Uh, I am Kwame Ose on Facebook also. So uh, hit me up. Um, I, I encourage you to uh, just follow one of my pages. I pro- promise you it's only positive things on my, on my page. If you're going through a bad time, if you're going through something, um, come on my page and I promise you you're going to leave with a different different mindset and different feeling. I love that. Yeah. Go check them out, everyone. It's awesome. All right. Well, hey. Kwame, just want to thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This is an incredible talk. It's been an hour. It flies by. Uh, my pleasure, man. Truly, uh, no, thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me just to talk and just to share my story. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate you telling your story. We, we couldn't be happier to have you on. I mean, Dylan had such great things to say, and to be able to hear your story start to finish, that was exactly what we needed tonight. So thank you. We really appreciate it. All right, well, um, we'll we'll let you get out of here, Kwame. So, um, so you can, I mean, what what time is it there now? Six thirty. Uh, oh, you're probably getting hungry. Yoga, yoga. Yeah, love no, I, that. I, I, I eat before I talk to you guys. Oh, good call. Yoga, get, get my Zen mode on. Hot yoga. Uh, warm yoga, bro. I tried the oh. hot man. I can't do it. I tried it once. Well, you know what? I put myself in a bad situation. I didn't bring water. Oh. And I literally almost passed out. Literally. I, yeah, I can't. I I'm too scared to try hot. I think they're like rebranding hot yoga as warm yoga, anyways. I don't think anyone's really oh, they are? hot anymore. Don't yeah. don't quote yeah, me on that good. though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! All right, call me. Uh, so we'll uh, let you go. Gonna do a little send off here for uh, Mark Boudreau and Ben Bramer. It's a brand new right. podcast. See you later, Kwame. All right, take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Juan. You too. Cheers. With the same old